Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool jukebox repair video for you. And we've been working on this Rockola 480 model jukebox, and if you did not see our other videos, go check them out. Uh, we did one uh, where we worked on the mechanism, we did one where we uh, adjusted some little things that were going on, and now we're going to do one on the keyboard assembly. Let me show you on these, the problem. And this is common, it happens on a lot of these Rockolas. So the problem is these buttons get where they don't work too good. So let's test them. So if I hit, I've got it on free play. If I hit one, works pretty good. If I hit two, works pretty good. Three. Now when I hit three, it should um, screw up. Let me see if I can. Yeah, it gets us all screwed up. So one, three. All right, that's working pretty good. One. Four, that's working pretty good. One, five, that's working pretty good. The reset's not working all that great. One, six, works every other time. One, seven, a little touchy. One, eight, very touchy. To the point that it might not work. One, Nine, that kind of works. One, zero. All right, so our six or seven and our eight are acting up a little bit. Um, two, seven, and a reset. Two, eight. So our eight is working, but just barely. They were a little worse earlier, but I've been messing with them and playing them a lot, so it's getting better. But I'm going to show you how to fix that up, and we're going to try to fix ours up. So hopefully we can pull it off. On this particular one, I think this pulls out, maybe, if the door is open. So I'm going to open the door and then open this up and we'll look at the back of it and uh, see how that, see how this works on this particular model. Okay, so I was able to open up that door and on the back this is the, um, the display and this is the actual uh, push buttons. So they're just, the whole assembly is held on here with some Phillips screws. So I'm going to take that off and we're going to go put it on the test bench and see if we can check it out. So this is how it looks out of the machine. There was just a plug on the bottom to unplug it. And this little bezel just comes off. There were some screws on the back in the corners holding the bezel on. Okay. And then there are two screws holding the PCB to this metal bracket, but all of these buttons I believe will pop right off. We can clean those up and paint the numbers back on them later with an ink pen or a sharpie or a paint pen or however you want to do it. You could probably do it with a paint pen and then clear coat them and it would be real durable. Alright, so we got that all apart. So I wonder how I get the metal off. Let's analyze this, shall we? What is the deal with the metal? I took the screws out. But apparently there's something else holding it. Let me see if I can figure out what that is. Well, there were two more screws on the back, but I cannot get that thing off to save my life. So uh, we're just going to leave it. We're going to do it without it. We're going to work without it, people. If I didn't just lose my spring. Here we go. Okay, so let's see how these work. If you very carefully, and people be careful. <laughs> if you break this, you're screwed. If you very carefully pull this little tab back. Right? I mean, if you, if you do break it, you could put the button back on. And then this would come up too high. But once you put the bezel back on, it would hold it in place. So, I mean, but try not to break it, people. Very carefully push those back while you while you try to get your thing up. This will come right off. And you can see that there is a little spring in there. Which is what gives it its spring. And so the reason that we're having a problem with it not registering is because this little these little metal contacts need to contact these little brass looking, gold plated looking, something like that, uh, 
contacts down in there. So we need to clean that up, get that looking nice and pretty, and then put it back together, and that should fix our problem. We also need to clean these little teeth. So we, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, this is seven, eight we were definitely having a problem with. So let's see what makes eight tick. When you push it down, it's going to connect this post and this post. And so those two together makes eight. I guess it says it right there. All right, so uh, looks like this wire here connects to one, two, three, four of them. All right, and then this one only connects to where they have the number eight, which is that diode there. It's a one sided board. So that diode jumps across to here. Okay. So you have a signal here that goes to one side of eight, and then eight is connected to the other side. So one, two, three, four share this one line. And then on this one, one, two, I guess that's probably three. Share another line. Yep. So three of the buttons share this line, four of the buttons share this line. So let's see what seven would be. Seven would be this one and this one. So this one, one, two, three. Three share this line was seven, and then it's hard to suss that one out. <laughs> but you see what's going on. It can it can basically tell which one is pressed because it makes two lines connect that don't normally connect. So I'm going to check all these diodes too, especially number eight. Since they all work, well, eight worked too. It just didn't work very good. Um, you know, you could have a bad diode if you have one that's not doing anything. It could be the diode that has the number on it. But in general, they all use the same lines, you know what I mean? So if you only have one that's broke, it kind of has to be the actual button or the one diode associated with it. It's not really going to be the wire because if this, like if this wire was bad, then not only would 7 not be working, but 0 wouldn't be working, and 0 was working fine, or whatever. You see my point. So, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take each one of these out. I'm not just going to do the one, and I'm going to clean those contacts, and then we're going to clean these contacts, all right? Get them nice and shiny. And then we'll put it all back together with the spring on it and see if that gets us a little better. And hopefully that'll get us working. And then we can move on to the next step. Okay, so we'll use a multimeter to test it. So I put this one back in. That's number seven. Let's see if I can do this like chopsticks. <laughs> now if I had the tripod set up, it worked better, because the tripod could hold the camera, right? And then I could hold these with both hands, but then I still had the problem where I need to press the switch. Right? <laughs> but I think I can pull it off. All right, look. Point two, and my meter's off point two. Okay, so whenever you push it in, these two connect now, okay? So let's try number eight, which isn't working right. I'm pushing the whole thing down. You see, it never gets to two. I did it a minute ago while I wasn't holding the camera. They aren't really, it's not really connecting. So these two are not connecting when the thing goes down because there's just too much dirt and resistance inside of that thing. So how did I clean the one? I got my, my new toy that somebody mailed me. 
Somebody mailed me this. Look, it's already fading off, though. This was made in Germany, so you know it's good stuff, right? <laughs> it's a fiberglass brush. So it works like a mechanical pencil. All right? And it takes these little cartridges, so I ordered some of these, too, because it wears away. So these are like just long pieces of fiberglass that you can use to scratch things. So the the uh, the contacts, this is perfect for cleaning the contacts, especially down in that little cavity there, right? But you can clean anything with it. Up in the corners and stuff, but it's it's uh it's pretty aggressive. I mean, you're scratching the hell out of it with it. And then which is good on something that's corroded, right? And then also uh, people have mentioned you don't want to, it makes a bunch of little dust. You don't want to breathe that crap if you can help it. And then also you don't want to stab yourself with it because if you get a little piece of fiberglass splinter, that's not good. But for what I'm doing, it's perfect. I'm glad I got it. So thank you whoever sent me this again. I mentioned them on, uh, on YouTube a while back. So get you one of these. It helps you clean up stuff. So let's do number eight. And then since I just tested it and it didn't work, we'll immediately test it and see if that fixes it. See, I clean that top one. The bottom one hasn't been cleaned yet. Doop, 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 doop. I got you, sucker. Yeah, that's right. I'm going to win. Simple as that. Look how shiny. Look how beautiful now, but it gets like some dust in there, so you want to clean that out. Don't blow in it. It'll get all over your mouth. Don't do that. And then I'm going to do the same with the bottom here. Put the spring back on it right in the middle. Bam, 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 and we'll see if she works. Oh, snap. Look at that, people. Suck a free. All right, so I'm going to do the rest of them, and uh, then we'll see if we can clean up these buttons and make them look better, too. What you think about that? All right, folks, so I got it all cleaned up. They're all, the springs are working right. And then I checked it with the multimeter, and when I press them down, each one of them connects together as a dead short, like you want. Okay, and then I was looking at the two LEDs, so inside the reset button these two LEDs go so that it can light up red and say, oh no, you made a mistake, reset it. I was trying to do that earlier when I was trying to start with three or whatever. And they weren't working, but if you look, so there's the top LED and there's the bottom one. Um, one of them, one of the legs comes from this connector here. So without that connector on it, I don't know that it would ever uh, light up. So I must have had something unplugged because um, this connector was on it, but I didn't have one up here. So there must be another connection that goes to it to make those LEDs light up. I don't know. Or it, it could be that this was used on multiple models, and on this model it didn't do that. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do, we're going to try to make it these look better. So this one looks good, actually. We're not going to mess with it because nobody's ever pressed it. Let me show you this. This will be neat. So here's the reset. See how square the top of it is? Right. So this was in a bar, and that's the shape it's in. After 40 years, this is a 1980, okay? Now let me find you, you know, the operators, the, the, they would put in new, um, they would put in new records all the time, and the, uh, the A side would be the 100 numbers, and the B side would be the 200 numbers, so all of the records start with 100 or 200. Okay, so here's the one button. So it's plastic. And just people touching it has worn it away over the years. Look at that. That's from humans selecting the number. <laughs> so let's see what the two looks like. See, the 2 is not as bad because it's the B-side. So the, the songs aren't as good on the B-side usually, so they didn't get played as much. 
And then if you go to something, looks like a lot of the 130s or 230s got picked, or one maybe 103 was a Kuka. Alright, we get down to 8, which is our button that wasn't working too good. It's in better shape. And then the reset, you hardly ever hit. It's just if you make a mistake, you hit reset, it resets the selection. Must have been some good fours. <laughs> Alright, so what I want to do is, I've got these little paint pens. Somebody actually sent me these too, but I've got a bunch of these. Um, these particular ones are acrylic, they're water-based. But it's just a pen with paint in it, and you can just draw in whatever you want. So fortunately on these, the number is in a valley, so if you hit it, if you put the paint down in there, you can wipe off the paint, any paint that gets on the top, and it'll just stay down in there where it's supposed to be, and it'll look pretty good. So I started doing one of them. So I have ran into another problem. So this is the five. One, two, three, four, five. It goes right there. All right. But here's my problem. I cannot tell if that's one or if that's one. Huh? Huh? What do you think? And then the eight. Is that eight? Or is that eight? I don't know. Or even worse, is that a nine? Or is that a six? I'm just going to have to guess, I guess. Is that a six? Or is that a nine? These are big problems, people. Does the zero go this way? Or this way? Or this way? Or this way? <laughs> So I'll try to figure all that out, and then we'll put it back in. But yeah, I'm just going to ink them up a little bit, make them look better, and then uh, we'll put it back in the machine and see if it fixed it. I'll bet it did. Let's see how good I can make them look. You can't even, look, you can't even read them. Let's see if I can make them where you can read them. Uh, not bad. What do you think? That's definitely passable. If you get one that sticks down, you've got the spring in there wrong. Take it back apart and mess with the spring a little bit. It should be centered right in the middle. So this will this will be a similar setup on all of the Rockolas that uh, used uh, circuit boards. You know, so if it doesn't use this circuit board setup, if it's the old ones with the with the latch push buttons or like an old Wurlitzer with the latch push bu push buttons. If one of those isn't working right, it has nothing to do with this. This isn't. This is a completely different type of setup. But if you have a PCB, it's always like this. You've got a switch soldered to the board, um, and usually the inside of the switch is what's what's dirty. You can use contact cleaner too. Just spray inside of it, but it uh, it's better if you can take it apart and actually physically clean the the uh, contacts. That's the bezel will fit back on like that. And then once we get our lights working behind the uh, behind the machine, it will probably... I don't know if there's a way that light gets in there to illuminate the buttons or not, but um, possibly. Okay, so I'm going to go put this back in the machine, and then we'll test it out and see if that fixed it. Hopefully. Hopefully. Keep your fingers crossed, people. Okay, folks, I've got it back in there. We've still got a light bulb back here that's out that we have to replace. But it's getting there, right? So let's test it. Let's see if what we were attempting actually worked. Let me turn down the brightness so you can see it a little better. All right, so one still works. Two still works. Reset still works. Now, if I press the wrong one, so nothing starts with a three or a four or eight or a seven, these lights should come. These lights should come on, telling me that I need to reset it. But there's no harness in there to plug that in, so I don't know. Maybe it just wasn't a function on this one. Um, so to get these to light, I have to hit the correct number first. So thirteen, yeah. 
14, yep. 5, 6, 7, and I'm, I'm hitting them hard, but you don't have to after you clean them, so just barely hit it. And then 8 was the one that wasn't working. No problem. No problem. 9, no problem. Voila! We fixed it! I wonder if I've got... I'll just do a random number. I don't know which re all records are in here. I don't know if it's all the way full. Yeah, I picked one that's not in there. <laughs> but, 167, let's see, did it actually play? It is trying to play 167, so that worked out perfect. Exactly what we were looking for. It'll hang up our imaginary record. So there you go. Yeah, if you, so if you end up where the buttons aren't working right, you just need to take them apart and clean them. Clean them, clean them, clean them, and that'll get it going. So these are these Rockolas especially, but you know, all of the all of the jukeboxes have their, their merits. But I, I really like the Rockolas. I'm not saying they're the best, I'm just saying that I like them. Um, these Rockolas especially, it, you just go through and you just work with every little part. But whenever you get one, if you're trying to restore it, or I don't even like using the word restore, but if you're trying to repair it, you kind of need to mess with everything in it. Everything in it's going to need you to touch it. So just to get the buttons working right, we have to spend, this probably took me an hour or so, you have to dedicate about an hour's worth of time to take that all apart, clean it, repaint the numbers on, put it all back in, and then everything works good. So you need to do that with the profit setter unit. You need to do that with the popularity meter over here. This little flasher board here that goes here just to make the bonus light flash on every once in a while if you, if you want that working. Uh, the power supply probably needs some capacitors changed in it whenever you get it. The amplifier will need some capacitors changed whenever you get it. Your coin mech, uh, you can see the wiring's a mess on this one. The mechanism needs to be disassembled and, and oiled on them. And then, uh, uh, as you saw, we did those adjustments on it later because it wouldn't play any of the B-side records. Um, and so it's just, there's a ton of stuff to mess with. All of these, these uh, little title strips that go up in the top here. So we need, we need to print out a bunch of those. For every record it's just a lot of work but it's not really the jukebox's fault so it's you know a lot of people say all oh, those things they're they're very problematic no they're not they they work great it's just they need a lot of work to get them going again you have to go through and mess with every little freaking thing in it but everything that you do fix is one step closer and now we don't have to worry about our buttons being messed up because they will probably last forever now so i hope that helps you with yours if you've got one that you're uh messing with and you've got a button that doesn't work quite right, now you know what you need to do to fix it up. So leave your comments below. Give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it for you. And uh, uh, we'd like to thank everybody that's been using our Amazon links right here before Christmas too. Isn't that awesome? So people have been, if you don't know about that, we have links down below to Amazon.com. Whenever you go to those links, uh, if you buy anything while you're on Amazon, it doesn't have to be what we link, but just anything, it gives us a small little tip a, purchase, a piece of your purchase price and doesn't raise your prices or anything. It just gives us a part of the uh, profit. So we appreciate everybody that's been doing that. It's been really picking up lately. Thank you, folks. Um, and then also check out our brother channel. So this, this jukebox, uh, we actually all these years had in storage down in Jefferson. And so my brother uh, is always down there getting into all kinds of stuff. The name of his channel is My Brother Donnie. And so I'm always down there with him. Uh, just a couple weeks ago, we picked this jukebox up, put it in my truck, and I brought it back. But uh, he's he's always doing farming videos or working on trucks, or uh, we've got a we we just bought me and him, him and I, this old grocery store, but it's a little tiny one. So when I say grocery store, you're thinking a food line. No, not that big, not as big as like a Kroger's or a Harris Teeter or a Piggly Wiggly, not quite that big. This is one of the small ones from way back in the '60s. So we bought this old building and we're fixing it up and so uh, we're doing a whole series of 
videos on that. Go check it out. Name of the channel is my brother Donnie. I'm over there with him usually. So I will see you on the next video. Hope you enjoyed this one. Mm. Awesome. I finally got one, but I can't play it because YouTube will kick me off. Mm. See you on the next video.